We've been married 20, well, together 20 years. 18. 18, married 20 together. If you're best friends, I think it works. Yeah. It's easier. We just hit it off instantly. And it's one of those, you got me at hello. I think at that time, I'd already traveled the world, so a little bit different, chatting with her, what I was missing in the world. He asked me, he said, well, you've traveled everywhere, and where's the place you'd love to go? And I said, I, I really want to go to Africa. That's one place I haven't been. <laughs> I think you tell the story best. I was looking for a Thursday through yeah. a Sunday that we could be together, and I was thinking more like New York or L.A. for a long weekend. She said, I want to go to see big cats in Africa, and I almost spilled my drink, and I thought, whoa, that's a long Thursday through Sunday, but let's <laughs> give it a go. So I opened a Condé Nast magazine, 1-800 number, talked to this girl, I'll never forget her name, is Christine, called her and said, I want to go to Africa, and she said, you want to see big cats? I said, fine. You want to see the pyramids? I said, yeah, that's good. And she said, do you want to go see the Cape? I said, yeah, let's do that too. And she said, how long do you want to stay? And I said, Thursday through Sunday. This is how ignorant the whole thing is. <laughs> and finally, she said, pick one place. And then get on the plane, go over there, get off the plane, take a look, and then come back. Because that's what it's going to be. <laughs> and I said, OK, we'll settle off on Kenya and Tanzania. But uh, that trip ended up our very first really long day, or really long date. Uh, that Thursday through Sunday ended up being 28 days. Yeah. We went on a 28-day trip. That month-long first trip has led to many happy years together, 20 and counting. But long before Carrie touched Libby's heart, back to when she was a little girl growing up in Springfield, Illinois, Libby discovered a first and enduring love. I've just always been an animal fanatic. I've, you know, we had dogs and cats as a kid, and I mean, I had a duck, and I just have always just loved them and always had a connection with animals. My horses are, oh, they're one of the greatest loves of my life. They're wonderful. They call them the golden retriever of horses. They're gypsy banners, and they are just as sweet as can be. I had always dreamed of having horses, and I just absolutely fell in love with these guys. I went to the Fort Worth Stock Show, saw the show, met the horse, and fell in love. And then I fell in love with his brother, too. <laughs> and it just kind of went from there. They, they say gypsy horses are like potato chips. You can't just have one. To work with them is just so fun, because they're gentle, they're forgiving, you know, for a novice, we can drive them. Dressage, Western pleasure, English pleasure, they're up for anything. Libby has always been up for anything as well. She had seen Africa numerous times through the lens of a camera or binoculars, but she had never experienced it through the scope of a rifle. That all changed one day following a simple suggestion. The first time I ever shot a rifle, I shot anything, was we had gone out to a shooting range. And the owner of the shooting range was there and had a seven millimeter. And he said, hey, just take a shot, try it. I thought, oh, I don't know. Can I, you know, shoot? I don't know, I've never shot a rifle. So I did and I was shocked <laughs> because it was actually a perfect shot. <laughs> I was surprised at myself, so I tried it again. And he's like, you're pretty darn good at this. She did a lot of shooting and got very proficient at it <laughs> and never had any formal training whatsoever. Previous to my first hunt, I had so much pressure on myself that the last thing I would ever want to happen is to wound something. So I wanted to feel so confident in myself and my shooting ability that I literally spent a month going every day shooting 20 rounds, which I didn't understand at the time <laughs> was really not quite that necessary. I enjoyed it, so I, and I still love to shoot. One of the hallmarks of Libby and Carrie's relationship is a good-natured rivalry, with each trying to outdo the other. That lighthearted competitiveness carries over into all that they do. We like to play competitive games. We fish, we love deep sea fishing, and we get competitive. When we were dating, we were in Africa fishing, and we had a contest who got the most fish, biggest fish, and I can truthfully say that I 
did not try very hard for the first few times and things like that, and she won. That's not kind of fair and square, but I'll let her have those. But then after we got married, I didn't feel like I had to give that in to her and stuff like that. And the uh, sad part about it is she's still winning. Ironically, the one animal that had eluded my husband all his years of hunting was the lesser kudu. I said, well, that's going to be my first animal then. I want a lesser kudu. And he's like, yeah, good luck with that. Sure enough, it was a lesser kudu. It was a very emotional experience. And he was, of course, proud, like, oh my gosh, you did it again, <laughs> as far as it goes with our competitiveness. That was my first animal. And then my second animal was a leopard. And my third was a lion. In our relationship, it's just fun for us to be able to have a hobby that we do together and enjoy. The beauty I see out there is amazing. And I just love watching the animals and the landscape and the terrain and everything. You're never going to see the same thing twice. I've had the privilege of doing both photographic and hunting safaris. And for the first 15 years, all I did was photographic and enjoyed it very much. You get to see so much game, but they're in a very small area. Hunting provides you a totally different perspective of things because you're in a much larger area. You will go days without seeing any game and you have to do it on foot. You are now in the wild looking for game up close and personal. When it's all said and done, you're providing meat for our villages. You are providing for the whole economy. You're putting back into conservation what real conservation is. I've been amazed since the first time we went to Africa and, and what she has accomplished and what she's overcome with her own fears. Anyone that knows me knows how much I love my horses, my dogs. I love animals so much. Some people can't understand, how can you hunt then? How can you actually shoot an animal? Well, because that's so different. What they have to understand is it is conservation. And it's not about just shooting an animal. It's done ethically, morally, and because that's what the country has provided quota for. That's what people don't understand. So much goes into it. I don't want any animal to ever suffer, and if you take a great shot, they're going to not suffer at all. And that's an animal that's already elderly. By the time it's all said and done at the year end, if a quota is not met, they're going to. And guess what? It's not probably going to be that 10-year-old lion. It's going to be whatever they find. They have to keep the numbers in check. That's literally what they do. We do that here in the States. I mean, we do that with deer. You keep a quota because there's a reason to do so. How am I an animal lover, but I can hunt? I hunt because I do love animals. I hunt because it's the most ethical thing to do for conservation. And I did not come to that decision lightly. Well, she's the most passionate person that I've ever met, most people ever meet. And if she can see hunting as that, then I couldn't think of a better advertisement because uh, she's the softest, kindest person that you'll ever meet. After experiencing for 20 years being over there, I think we've managed to stay about three years total. It's a lot of time to see. And for somebody like me who's a huge animal lover, it's very important to me and I'm very passionate about it because it's the only thing that works. Libby is serving as the chair for the 2018 NRA Women's Leadership Forum Luncheon and Auction in Dallas. It's a role that she's eagerly embraced. Everything that the Women's Leadership Forum does is very important to me. They're basically bringing together women that are like-minded. You meet wonderful people that you have so much in common with, all with the same values. It's just an amazing group of women. It's easy to get involved. The first thing I would say, come to one of the luncheons. I think once you go to one, you're pretty much hooked and you don't want to miss one every year. Our 2018 NRA annual meetings will take place in Dallas, 
and the wonderful Libby Crottinger. Libby's graciously agreed to chair our 2018 luncheon and auction. My hopes for the Dallas Leadership Women's Luncheon is to basically just bring in new women that are not aware of this forum that even exists and introduce it to new people who I know would love to be a part of it and would think it was a fabulous thing. It's just a fun, fun, exciting time to be together.